Bravo Bay Books presents Historians Proper, written by S. David Acuff. This science fiction novelette is performed by Megan Davis, Mara Pearl, Denise Kruger, and David Acuff. Chapter 5 After no answer on comms, Alex decided to check on Cindy himself. He knew that she housed herself on the east side of the new domain. As the early morning sun shone through the windshield of the Oryx, Alex's silvery tactile lid slid into place, blocking the glare. The supercar lifted off the floating garage surface as Alex pushed skyward. Air traffic was heavier than usual. The lower cloud line had cut down the dimensional commuter space and packed more vehicles into a smaller area. With the autonav engaged, it gave Alex some time to think, or maybe even a much needed power nap, what he wouldn't give for just 10 minutes of shut eye. But every time he closed his eyes, Harris's fat face was there leering at him. Harris was a backstabbing monster, but he was also right that Cindy might not make it through another time fold. Not unless she used the Fleischpar. The Fleischpar had been invented in Time 5 by Jorn Swinson, also a Pentateuch. He had to because so many journeymen were dying in the time shifts. The mysterious serum reacted with the time fold, causing old memories to be lost, completely replaced by the new ones. Normalization. The death of a journeyman. The birth of a Dalit. A commoner. A life which knows only the present. It wasn't used widely because, for most of the Pentateuch, living with such limited view on reality was a fate worse than death. But there were those who treasured life above knowledge, and they lived on as commoners. Was he just being selfish, abandoning a dead-end life in Time 11 for the hopes of a better one for he and Valerie in Time 12? Odds were that she wouldn't even know him in the next time stream. But she would exist. If he let her die now, her life's force would slip into eternity, whatever that was. She didn't stand a chance here, but with Harris's bloody cyber war at hand, who did? They could easily take over the cyberscape, New Domain, and beyond. Harris had done it before. Incoming call. Computer informed him. Alex hit the comm button. Alex here. Alex, detective. A gravelly voice spoke. It appears you might have some answers for us concerning a security breach at 0500 hours in Generex. Don't know anything about that, officer. Alex lied. Well, the transcoder logs at online and the trace patterns we were able to salvage from the Generex say otherwise. Now, your citizen records are in good standing, so we'd like you to come down and... <laughs> Alex hit a scrambler button next to the comm switch, cutting off the rest of the conversation. Alex swore at himself for being so careless. They had used the call to track him. Now that they knew his ride number and flight status, they'd have no problem finding him, unless he switched over to manual. Air traffic was a highly choreographed dance with intricate calculations tracking millions of variables in a nanosecond. Everyone flew automatic. Alex switched to manual and angled down to city level. All he could do is dive into empty space and hope that it stayed empty. New Domain's air traffic central went into overdrive, rerouting to accommodate for this new independent variable falling through the already dense commuter space. The stranger in ride number 42-1905E never knew what hit him. The collision sent Alex's hover car careening out of control, spinning wildly toward the cityscape that jutted up at him. Lights flashed and warning buzzers sounded as Alex desperately tried to regain control. The shields were down and the lateral drives were shot. Alex muscled the steering wheel and rolled the vehicle upright. He angled the car so that the vertical thrust would slow his descent, but he had no visibility beneath him. The city engulfed him as the engines fought hard against gravity. 
a rooftop rushed up toward the car, and with a flat surface to push against, the hover car finally edged to a halt 30 feet off the deck. Most of his thrusters were offline except the verticals, which held their equilibrium at full thrust. Alex exhaled and ran a quick systems check. There was nowhere to go but down, so he eased off the throttle and settled the car onto the rooftop. Incoming message, the voice announced. Alex punched it up. It read 267B, West Holland, New Domain, 1345. Machine Raven, signed only with the letter S. It was Cindy, all right. The words extreme caution at the end were thoughtful, but unnecessary. West Holland spoke for itself. It was a high-tech think tank that sat on the dark edge of science. Most of their discoveries were outlawed immediately. Generex had paid them handsomely to download humans into the scape. Who knows how many lives were snuffed out from the time stream while perfecting the watchdog reintegration process. But they were well funded, so their collateral damage was overlooked and their research continued. Quite a resume. Cloning, mutations, biological weaponry, and now time travel. Alex slid a dash panel to the side and pulled out his Augur 413 special. It was very accurate and had a terrible bite. And if you fired up the bottom barrel too, things got really messy. He attached the chest holster under his left jacket flap and parked the gun inside. West Holland was a good stretch away, but with some public transport, he could make the appointment. 